psychologists of Reddit, what made you realize you were treating a psychopath? I'm not a psychologist but I know a few, have studied it extensively and my sister works with MH and the police. He told me he tried to care how people feel but he doesn't know how that would even come about. How do you know you care for someone? How do you not feel indifferent? He just said he has three emotions indifference, anger and pity. It's worth mentioning the following. 1. Psychologists rarely even use the term psychopath anymore. Those disorders which would fall under the umbrella of psychopathy are preferred to the otherwise generic and easily confused term of psychopath. Note how many people frequently conflate psychopathy with narcissism. There's a narcissism personality disorder which fits many models of psychopathy, but not all so-called psychopaths and narcissists. 2. It often doesn't take training in psychology to spot so-called psychopaths. Formal training is needed to diagnose and treat it, but our brains are highly tuned to pick up on small things that our higher consciousness is often otherwise unaware of. This isn't to say that we should purely trust our gut. We are more often wrong than we'd like to admit, but how we feel about first impressions is often very important. 3. Far more people exhibit features of various psychopathic personality disorders than most realize. The vast majority of these people, however, live fairly ordinary, productive lives and don't exhibit violent tendencies. It has even been argued that psychopaths are an important evolutionary element, giving us people who can detach themselves from the human experience in order to provide valuable insights or behaviors the rest of us couldn't fathom. 4. Most of us will go through periods in our lives in which we often exhibit many symptoms of a personality disorder, but these are merely moments, they don't truly impact our lives in the way that a true disorder does. I'm a psychology student and we only refer to psychopathy as antisocial personality disorder. Also having all these traits is not exactly indicative of having ASPD personality disorders are challenging to diagnose as isn't ASPD more so. Not a psychologist but a counselor. They were talking about a disagreement they'd had with their partner. An accidental spillage of water onto some electronics. It could honestly happen to anyone. As calmly as if he was describing. I dunno changing a channel. He started saying how he pinned his partner up against the wall and started trying to strangle her. No emotion, no change of tone, just as if it were a normal thing. I was a trainee at the time and not qualified to deal with DV. Needless to say I transferred the client to another therapist. However I was not allowed to end the session and had to sit with him for another 20 minutes. I've never been so scared in my life. I felt like a small prey animal trapped in the room with a predator. He just didn't care. However, if you met him you'd think he was just a normal, successful kinda average dude. I am 99% sure he was a sociopath. Because he kept trying to get certain reactions out of me, kept changing his tactics, kept trying to charm me, and when I wouldn't rise to it became weirdly, coldly irritated. I've never had a client like it before or since. Not a psychologist but from my experience of dating a psychopath, didn't know until years in. A lot of what appears as emotion is simply mirroring emotions they see others exhibit and how they believe is the socially appropriate way to respond, whether or not they actually feel that way. This is how they blend in and appear normal to the average person. They are narcissistic, and everything revolves around them. They are always able to place blame on other people. Nothing is ever their fault. However, Anything positive in their lives or others lives is because of them. Because they are narcissists they believe they are much more important than they actually are. They have strong influence over others because of their ability to feel nothing when manipulating others. And this is how they exert control over others. They will do whatever it takes in order to come out on top of a situation with no actual regard for others lives or feelings. They may fake their feelings or reactions to continue to manipulate those around them. And they get pleasure over having control over other people and feeling like they're pulling all the strings. A good saying I heard went something along the lines of, you never truly know someone until things don't go their way. Not a psychologist but I read a story about a neurologist that did a brain scan on himself and found out he was a psychopath. He wrote a, terrible, emo, book about it. His wife was not surprised if I recall correctly. Lots of misinformation. Lots of people who have clearly spent too much time watching Criminal Minds and reading Wikipedia pages. 
You technically can't even diagnose psychopathy, at least clinically. The PCLR, which people have mentioned, see, cherry picked, is a list of the traits commonly seen in psychopaths, and is not conclusive as many people can display these traits and not be a psychopath as such. The very model of the traits of psychopathy is reductionist and tends to ignore the context under which the behavior takes place in favor of a quick diagnosis as people scramble to see the motive in an offender's actions after the fact. Most people that fit the traditional behavioral role of a psychopath aren't violent offenders, but rather highly successful individuals who lean toward careers that reward their lack of empathy. It is even harder to recognize in children and the idea of the psychopathic triad, killing animals, obsession with fire, and long-term bedwetting, which has long been seen to be a predictor if future violent behavior was first posited in 1964 and has been the subject of heavy debate ever since. For some context, whenever you write any kind of paper in any psychology class, research is considered out of date after 5 years, not 55. I don't claim to be a psychologist for karma, I have studied it but not in any amount that makes me qualified to treat people, but it needed to be said that people are shamelessly milking the classic idea of a psychopath for internet points, openly and shamelessly narcissistic behavior, then following it with a lack of remorse or admission of guilt and topping it off with a big old load of shallow effect, which would make most of the people commenting on this thread, as judged by themselves, psychopaths. Funny that. So the real psychopaths, are the friends we've made along the way. I've always wondered how many high functioning psychopaths are out there, like people with murderous debaucherous impulses and they are just able to suppress because they know how to function in society. Well technically psychopaths are more common in an office as managers or similar high positions than prisons. A lack of emotion doesn't make you a violent killer. The best way to know for sure is to sit down with a psychologist and tell them, without reservation, about your life and the way you experience the world. If you're more interested in self-diagnosis, although I would advise against it as it's entirely meaningless due to self-deception and bias. There are plenty of resources available online. You could easily find a copy of the DSMV with 5 minutes or less of online searching. If you're looking for personal experiences which align with yours, just read through Reddit. There are plenty of us floating around. Some things you could look for pretty easily. 2. Do you feel empathy? Have you ever felt bad for hurting someone? Do you get sad when people leave your life? Do you miss people when they leave? Are your emotions particularly strong or long lived? Have you ever felt love? Are you generally law abiding due to moral reasons? Do you get outraged at moral offenses? Are you prone to loneliness? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then I would say it's unlikely that you're a sociopath. But then, I'm only able to speak from my own experience and I'm not a psychologist. So take it with a grain of salt. Therapist here. A good social path will, on the surface, seem totally invested in treatment. They kind of schmooze you try to impress you. Then eventually you catch on that they're manipulating you to think one way while they're totally thinking behaving opposite of what you think. Also, if you're an empath and really pick up on people's moods vibes, social path psychopaths just give you a big gut feeling that something isn't right. You almost feel slimy after talking to them. That's my experience anyways. I had one and it was so bizarre and haunting. I was doing a psych evaluation on a tween. I think he was like 12 year old, and was in the early stage of doing the clinical interview with him and his mother. The mother described various acts of violence the child had done, in addition to other things, and I listened to the child's explanations of why. After I walked them out of the office, I remember talking to a colleague that this was the first time I had encountered a sociopath in the making. My wife is bugging me to share. I actually started my career in forensic psychology, but decided to get out of it after I got stabbed and assaulted a few times by patients. I then started working with children and teens. It was there, working with an 8 year old girl, we'll call her Sarah, that I came across my first person I dear mark as a psychopath. Sarah came from a pretty good family and they were really dedicated to help her moving forward. The parents had no obvious concerns with their own behavior and they seemed to be pretty well regulated folks. 
They had bound to cross a few therapists before seeing me, most of which seemed to struggle with the fact that Sarah did not seem to be demonstrating more traditional behavioral issues. For example, she was not impulsive, she did not just lose her temper and go wild. Instead, Sarah was attentive, planning and meticulous. She was pretty textbook in that she had a long history of mutilated Barbies and some quite hurt animals along her path. The part that was bit unique with Sarah is she rarely got in trouble for doing anything because it seemed that she was really good at convincing other children, usually those a bit younger than he of doing things. We got my foot in the door by doing some psych testing with Sarah. I had a booklet in front of her, thing costs about $200, that we use for the tests. Sarah proceeded to slowly rip one page at a time while looking me in the eye. I have a pretty good poker face. She asked me what I was going to do about it. I said nothing. She continued. After a while she admitted that she was surprised I had not reacted yet. I told her it wasn't my booklet and that I just work here. That actually was why she stopped. The next 9 hours I spent with Sarah continued with this kind of stuff. The most uncomfortable part was that she just stared at me constantly and tried to read my face. I think she was really thrown off by my lack of expression. When she was observed with her parents she did the exact same thing. Child Protective Services was already well involved and everyone was kind of unsure what to do about this kid. She was, fortunately or unfortunately, about to move across the country and into a heavily wooded area. I remember her dad somewhat sadly joking at least the animals there might fight back. I remember the parents just seemed scared. About 6 months after she moved one of the worst fires in the history of the area happened and destroyed entire towns. I've always wondered if it was Sarah. Psychology student here. I got the chance to sit in on the interrogation. On a monitor in the other room of this guy who was clearly off. He seemed like a normal enough guy. Cracked a joke about the bland room and sat down. Smiling like how politicians do. Just that fake but somehow authentic smile. I thought he was actually innocent at first because most people I've seen interrogated who are guilty are really quiet, shy and nervous, but he was confident and relaxed. To make a long story short, he was a 20 some year old who shoved his mother into the corner of a wall. Her head cracked open and he watched her bleed out. Through the whole interrogation he was laughing and smiling. You could clearly tell he felt no emotional connection to his own mother, and had no guilt about anything he'd done. To start I am not a psychiatrist or anything, I'm a welder lol, but this thread brought to mind someone that I worked with for a while a few years ago, I'm a pretty confident man, I am not really intimidated by most people but this guy, he frightened me, I was working for a small company and I was the foreman, we were looking to hire someone to replace my old job of building hydraulic parts, he was my first pick to hire out of the people we interviewed. Looking back now I see that I was duped. He was friendly but just way overly friendly. I remember even thinking at the time that it was almost unsettling how friendly he was. We hired him and that changed within the first month. He didn't really seem to be interested in anyone other than himself. He had three children and he treated his family like they were garbage. He bragged to me about throwing one of his son's toys down the stairs and destroying it because there were scratches on the side of it. He had a severely autistic son that they used to lock into his bedroom at night and still wore diapers at the age of 12. He refused to have him put in a care facility even though that was seriously what needed to be done for him, at least for a while. He was very strange when it came to his daughter. He was overly attached and I personally felt and still feel that he was always molesting her. He told me that he bought her better clothes because girls are on a different level. He was the only one allowed to brush her hair because my wife can't do it right and neither can my daughter. He was an absolute terror to his wife. There was hardly a day that he wasn't screaming at her. Even when she did something nice like brought him food. He married her when she was 16 and she isn't allowed to see Jer family. He even had a charge of kidnapping when he and another underage girl tried to run off together. They made it a few states away when he was caught. He was p the court won't expunge his record. If you told him anything bad was happening to you he automatically came back with something that related to him. A friend of mine had committed suicide and when I told him he looked at me without any feeling whatsoever. Not even the obligatory sorry about your loss man. He would get extremely angry if you did him wrong in any way. He was also extremely manipulative and sneaky. I tried to get him a promotion before all of this showed up at the main warehouse in another state. 
he flew there and I found out later when he was there he was trying to talk them into firing me. Luckily he blew up when they said they would not meet his demands and they let me know what he was up to. He frightened me enough that I let my wife and mom know that if I turned up missing that he should be considered the main suspect. I'd care if he was a true psychopath or just an extremely angry narcissist. All I know is I have never met anyone like him before or since. Had this guy in waste management being treated for dizzy spells. The more he came in the more messed up he seemed. Had total disregard for human life but loved animals. Especially ducks and horses. It got to the point where he was untreatable. Had to be sent away. I'm pretty sure he was shot having dinner with his family. Comma total disregard for human life but loved animals. Oh no. That was just a redditor. Be wary of any responses here. Psychologists are bound to strict regulations prohibiting the disclosure of patient information. Excluding names isn't enough. I've seen real psychologists claim on similar threads that all the responses were fake. I'm a psychologist, but not a therapist. However, this weekend I got called out to my sister's home because her husband was threatening suicide. I got there, freaking out thinking that I was going to find a body, to him just sitting there sipping whiskey. He thought it was funny. I literally had my video camera out and had already googled the sheriff's number in case I found him dead. We went inside after I chewed him the frick out, and he tried to tell me that he never said anything about hurting himself. He convinced me that my sister was overreacting and being dramatic. Well, my sister came home a few minutes later, I made it there before her, and she started reading the texts. Tell the kids I love them. Tell them to say their prayers. They're yes moms and no moms. Tell them not to feel sad. I want you to be happy. I don't want you to feel guilty about this. This wasn't your fault. This has always been my destiny. I'm trying to think of more but it was basically a stray 20 minutes of this crap and then he turned off his phone. So he basically wrote a suicide note in order to get a response from my sister and just freaking lie directly to my face about it. Then, when he got confronted in front of me, he sat there talking about how he was in trouble. He lambasted my sister for calling his parents. I suggested counseling. He went off about how no mortal man can tell him about himself. So, TL, DR, yesterday I realized my brother-in-law is a complete psycho, no empathy, no remorse, focused solely on himself, willing to put other people through a heck just to get his way. I knew he had issues, but this is beyond anything I suspected, and he just still can't wrap his head around how awful it was. For anyone concerned, his own mother and father got involved in their making him stay with them until he gets some counseling. We'll see how that works out. Not really hopeful. Not a psychologist, but I know a person who is diagnosed high on spectrum. Crazy interesting dude that you never fully trust. Met him through parties at university. He was the party guy. Always hosted the best ones. Knew tons of people. Your typical idolized party kid that everyone had wanted to be friends with. I always thought he was a liar and never really gave him a ton of my time or energy. But friends liked his parties so we went. Went for a smoke one day and he followed me down to talk and was trying to pull all his usual stuff. The microfacial expressions explains a lot why I didn't believe him in almost everything. He slept with a lot of girls, like a lot. I never thought he seemed the type to just be a frisky player, couldn't ever put my finger on why. So he followed me down and started going off just talking and I just kinda ignored him and pulled the yoo thing. I had no interest in being lied to. Finally he got fed up and started trying to turn the tables on me, saying I was stuck up, we could be great friends act. I had enough and said basically no, cause you're a blatant liar and use people and I've seen this going on for over a year, not interested. Then the oddest part happened, his face just went blank, and I don't mean blank like someone's who in shock or anything, like scary watching a horror movie blank. I, being the dummy I am just stood there annoyed making eye contact. It felt like forever. Finally he goes how do you all this I basically told him I could just tell. Had a gut feeling. He uses people. He uses all the girls he sleeps with and he uses the parties as attention. Not anything else. That's when for the first time in the whole time I had ever seen him. He told the truth. Once again I don't know how I knew but I just knew. He has ASPD and was partially diagnosed when he was younger and confirmed when he got a bit older. I was right for his reasons why he did the stuff he did. 
Whole time he had this blank face with just the odd twitch on it. Then boom. He starts laughing and joking around again, trying to get a reaction from me. We had a few interactions like this over the years, and I still bump into him on odd occasions. He has always turned it into a game of when he takes girls home or obviously manipulates people, apparently not obvious to them, of catching my eye and shooting me a wink, like we're in some private joke together. I'm not sure if he was a confirmed psychopath. I didn't interact with him long consistently enough to find out for sure. I was introduced to G at a party. He was dating a friend of mine who I went to uni with, who we'll call M. I hadn't seen her for a while. Were both good friends with another friend. A. I was hosting a party and M and G were there. I was introduced to G. And as soon as I went to shake his hand and met his eye contact I knew something wasn't right. I felt the hair on the nape of my neck stand up and a shiver run down my spine. It was like there was nothing behind his eyes. I heard a little voice in the back of my head telling me to run for the hills. I met him a few times after that, and each time my lizard brain was internally screaming at me. I was on edge the whole time. I heard through A over the course of the next 6 months about how G was manipulative, controlling and vindictive towards M, and A was seeing less and less of M. I initially tried to reassure me that I was exaggerating and making it up, when I confessed I didn't like him right off the bat. Slowly she conceded that okay, maybe G was on the spectrum or something. Eventually she agreed that he was manipulative, but never met me at psychopath. Either way, A and I both assisted M in leaving the relationship. She was alive in girlfriend towards the end, and she's now happily single. A freaky nightmare for her, but a happy ending. She's had some counseling and we've closed ranks around her, and she is now happy. Sort of that she's been through it because she feels she's less naive about the world. I've never met someone on the spectrum who was creepy. Clueless on occasion. Sure, but awkward over enthusiastic and creepy manipulative are totally different vibes. Not my story but a friend's who work in a criminal psychiatric facility. He had talks two days a week with an inmate there to see if he was holding up. He was in there for an unprovoked, rather brutal assault for two years I think. A few months in my friend brought up the assault and wanted to talk of the motivation behind it. His answer. Oh this guy was walking with this gorgeous girl that I winked at and she ignored me. So I decided I should show her there are consequences for her disrespect. The victim was hospitalized for like a month partly due to a crushed ribcage by metal pipe. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.